everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video i hope that you have been enjoying your morning thus far so we're going to be talking about what is happening across the north atlantic there's that gulf system which is brewing of course models agree on that area of low pressure forming and intensifying before slamming into parts of the u.s and may even affect areas as far as the caribbean as it makes its way through so we'll be talking about that and also we'll be looking at the caribbean and what is expected today in terms of rainfall activity and even those winds it's going to be quite windy for some areas and we'll also briefly look at models. So here we are looking at the infrared satellite. Now there is the low pressure system out here. Uh, we can see all this associated activity. It's not affecting anyone at the moment, but there's that front uh, and we can see all of that increase in activity across the Gulf of Mexico. So it is tired and it's likely that we're gonna be seeing that air flow pressure forming and intensifying even more as it approaches the coast of Florida. So there is going to be that significant threat in terms of the heavy rainfall, which is likely to unleash flooding across some areas, those strong winds, those rough seas, very rough seas, and even tornadic activity may be possible from the system as it makes its way in. Now, uh, as we take a look at the Caribbean, here we can see that there is some moisture across the region. In the vicinity of the Northwest Caribbean, a lot of the activity there has essentially dissipated, but the tail of the front is still within the area. As we take a look a bit further to the east, we can see all these clouds coming in from the Atlantic. And so there may be some periods of some passing showers across sections of the eastern islands of the Caribbean, especially looking toward Trinidad and Tobago. And for some areas this morning, such as Martinique, there is some shower activity there uh, so we're going to be looking at the rainfall forecast in a moment but on the whole we're not seeing any areas of major activity right now let's go on to the rainfall forecast now this is from the euro model and as it becomes more colorful that is indicating more rainfall activity so for eastern islands lesser antilles there may be some showers moving through similar store for puerto rico and the virgin islands and the abc islands as well we're seeing that in the vicinity of trinidad and tobago it's a bit more colorful so there may be some more shower activity there look into why northern south america for colombia there may be some periods of heavy downpours similar store for sections of venezuela but looking toward the guyana is not seen where much is expected although there could be some showers through the day and then for central america going to southeast nicaragua costa rica and panama we're seeing those orange and red shadings indicating that there may be some substantial rainfall similar story as we head toward parts of mexico northern guatemala belize sections of northern honduras the keys as well and the bay islands of honduras so there may be some substantial rainfall within that area uh, potentially for the Cayman Islands and some spots in Jamaica as well. We're seeing a bit of yellow shading for eastern parishes, but really some of these cloud clusters may be moving through anywhere across the island and unleash some rainfall because we're seeing that green shading across all of the islands. So there may be some showers moving through today. And for Cuba, it is a similar story. Northern Cuba, South Florida, going to the northwestern Bahamas as well. And even for Hispaniola, in essence, it is likely that there will be some shower activity across the region but there's no major system right now as it relates to the wind forecast look at all these shades of blues popping up so the winds today are likely to be over 20 knots or 25 knots for many areas looking toward the northeastern isles of the caribbean sections of the leeward islands and even the virgin islands and puerto rico as well hispaniola parts of jamaica the cayman islands and even the islands of san andres and providencia and even for Cuba, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands as well. And in the Gulf and looking out offshore of Florida to the Atlantic, we're seeing that the winds are likely to pick up within these areas. Very windy. And of course, that Gulf system is only going to be enhancing what is happening there. That winds could be uh, equivalent to that of a strong tropical storm or even a hurricane as the system makes its way in. Uh, early next week. So in terms of what models are showing, let's kickstart things 
taken a look at the GFS. And so this is as we head into Saturday this weekend, the 16th of December. There we can see all of that increase in moisture, all of that activity associated with that expected area of low pressure, which is highly likely to form at this point. And with that, it is going to be moving in, bringing with it the threat of tornadoes, those strong winds, those rough seas, a lot of heavy rain, which may trigger flooding as well. So that is going to be a major concern as the system makes its way in. And then this is as we head to Sunday, we can see that this air flow pressure is expected to make its way through uh, uh, portions of northern florida going into georgia and all that activity is spreading across other states such as the carolinas and uh we can see all this activity as well associated with it affecting parts of the bahamas cuba and even the cayman islands going on to the euro model as we head into sunday there we see all that activity making its way into florida and that airflow pressure uh, later on the day expected to be just in the vicinity of the border of georgia and south carolina with all of that activity Take a look at those shades of yellows and oranges near where that L is located. That L is that low pressure center. So this has the potential to unleash a lot of heavy rainfall across portions of the southeastern U.S. And it will continue its journey up north along the east coast, bringing impacts to other states. And also, uh, we can see that sections of the Caribbean are likely to feel impacts from this going toward the vicinity of the Bahamas, potentially the Turks and Caicos Islands, and uh, even for the Cayman Islands in Jamaica as well, there's likely to be an increase in rainfall activity as the system makes its way up to the north. Now, in terms of the Caribbean, it may not only be the increase in rainfall activity, which is possible across some areas, but as we head into the mid, going to the latter part of next week and the start of the new week, which is Christmas week, there's likely to be a dip in temperature for some of us. So this is what GFS is forecasting as we head into next Wednesday, the 20th of December. This is a temperature anomaly map here. So those areas of oranges and these reds, they indicate above average temperature. Temperatures. Meanwhile, the blue areas indicate below normal or below average temperatures. So we can see that cooler temperatures likely across much of Central America as well as the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, the Bahamas, potentially even going toward uh, some spots in Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, or even see some of that blue shading across the Lesser Antilles as well for some islands of the Lesser Antilles. Now, this would be welcomed by most of us. So hopefully it comes to fruition, even going to Saturday of next week, the 23rd of December, we can see that there's still some cool air loitering around the vicinity of the Caribbean. And this is exactly what I spoke about earlier, even on that video on my second channel, Weather Extras, uh, with these systems that move a bit further south. So with that, they allow for more cool air to make its way into the Caribbean and bring along with it those cooler temperatures. And so let's see what's going to be happening, guys. But of course, I'm here to keep you posted as per usual. And that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video. And I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, as always, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weather wise.